my thought process when preparing for the birth was that I was going to go into labor. I was going to take a shower. I was going to braid my hair so it was out of my face. I was going to put on like a nursing bra that I had gotten and just like an oversized t-shirt and just be like super comfortable and just super put together. And then I was going to have my husband put um, the waterproof mat underneath our birthing tub, which was in our bedroom and get the crock pot and like all the other things around. Um, but my labor was super fast, so that didn't happen because I was like unable to help or tell anyone what I needed when I went into labor because it was so fast. Um, that when my midwife got there, she's like, I need the crock pot, I need this. And my husband's like, I didn't know that. And I kind of did not prepare him for what was coming. So with this labor, um, like about a month before my due date, I will actually get every single thing we need ready and in the room that we're going to give birth in and have everything definitely prepared and not just leave things for when I go into labor, we'll get it around. Um, obviously that will work for some people and obviously I thought it would work for us, but definitely did not in our experience because it was such a fast labor. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. So today we are going to be talking about my home birth that I had with Isaac. So I am 24 or 25 weeks pregnant. I don't even know at this point. Um, and we are planning on having a home birth with this baby as well. And closer to my due date, I am going to have a birth supply video for home births. And I'm going to share the list of supplies that my midwife uh, asked us to get with Isaac um, and then I will show you the supplies we actually got around. Um, now there is a few things I want to see before and get started with this video. In the video where I explain the supplies we get, I will get a few things that are not on the list because they are personal preference and things that I like to have um, or think I would like to have at my birth. Um, so that's the first thing. The second disclaimer is that we will not be getting all of the supplies that is on the list because of my birth with Isaac. Uh, we didn't use all the supplies for that birth because he came very fast. I so wanted to I make the this video and share my birth story with you guys so that when I shared that video, it kind of makes sense when I said, well, I'm not really going to get that. Uh, so you kind of understand what we're doing um, and why we're not getting everything on the list. Um, because of our experience with our last birth, we kind of know <laughs> Burke. Because of our experience with my, our last birth, uh, because of my our, blah, because of our experience with Isaac's birth, we kind of know the things that we used and we didn't use, and the things we liked and we didn't like. So while I will share the whole list with you guys at that time, if I'm not getting everything <laughs> that it says on there, that is why. That being said, I will get into the video. The First thing I guess I will start with is the day that he was born. So he was born on November 25th at 2 a.m. So my labor was on the 24th. So the morning of the 24th, my friend asked me to go Christmas shopping with her. And so we walked around and did that. Um, and we stopped and got coffee and french fries at McDonald's. Not that that's really relevant to the story, but <laughs> we did that. I felt no contractions. Nothing was really different. I actually had quite a bit of energy that day. I felt fine. We went to dinner um, at my in-law's house and they were actually getting ready to leave for a flight the very next morning. And so my mother-in-law asked me if I was having any signs of labor or anything. And I said, no, I felt fine. Everything was normal. We went home and that night we just hung around the house. Um, my husband was watching a football game and I was grading school papers and just kind of chilling. Around 8.30, my plug came out. And while this is kind of gross, I feel like it's definitely part of the story. So around 7.30, I started to get really bad diarrhea. And again, I know it's gross, but it's part of my story. It was cleaning out my body, preparing it for labor. So that stuff wouldn't come out when I was in labor. So I am kind of grateful for it now, but at the time, obviously it wasn't the most pleasant of things. So that happened around 7.30, around eight o'clock, my plug came out and I started having um, contractions. They weren't terrible. They were definitely contractions. I'd been having Braxton kicks for a few weeks um, and at my previous midwife appointment she said that I was having like contractions or Braxton Hicks 
I wasn't feeling them. Like she would be like, that's a contraction way right there when your stomach is hard. They weren't very noticeable for me at that point and it never bothered me. It was never something like, oh, I'm having contractions right now. It was just like, kind of felt like the baby was kicking and it was nothing that ever like bothered me or alarmed me. So at 8.30, my plug came out and I called my midwife and she was like, you're gonna have hours. You know, your plug came out, you can be in labor for hours after that. Just try and go to sleep, try and get some rest. And if the contractions get stronger later in the night, like you need to let me know. My contractions did get a little bit stronger and then at 9.30, my water broke and I called her again. And I'm like, my water broke. She's like, Emily, you're gonna be in labor for a long time. This is your first birth. You need to you know, try and get some sleep, get some rest while you can, go to bed, try to like, sleep if you can. Well, I never made it to bed because at the time she hung up, um, I was still in the bathroom a lot, having to go to the bathroom all the time. So I was busy doing that. And then by 10 30, my contractions were so hard that I was doubling over in pain and crying because they hurt so bad. They were also really close together and I didn't really like count them at all, but they were really close together. At 11 o'clock, my husband uh, found me freaking out and I was like, kept coming and like checking on me and constantly being like, are you okay? Like, are you doing okay? What can I do for you? And I'm like, nothing. And I was literally like doubling over, breathing heavily, groaning, like all the stuff. Every time I had a contraction, it hurt really bad. And then I started crying and I was like, this is beginning labor. There is no way that I'm going to be able to do this if this is beginning labor. I already feel like I'm dying, which looking back was a little dramatic, but that's how I felt at the time. I was just like freaking out. So he's like, you need to be timing these contractions because they seem to be coming really fast. So I did that. They were about a minute, a minute, I'm trying to think. My contractions were two minutes apart and were lasting for 20 to 30 seconds each time. So he's like, you need to call your midwife. Something is not right. And I'm like, I've called her twice. I was so embarrassed. I was like, I don't want to call her again. She's just going to think I'm overreacting and I'm crazy. And he's like, Emily, this is why we're paying her so we can harass her if we need to. So I called her and I had a contraction right as she answered the phone and just listening to me have that contraction. She was like, you're in like labor, labor. I will be right there. <laughs> she hung up the phone. She got there around 1130. Um, she had like a 20 minute drive. So she got there around 1130. She came in and she threw the like tarp thing that we had to put over our bed and so we gave birth onto the bed over the, everything on the bed and had me get on there because when she got there my contractions were so close together and so strong that she thought the baby was possibly coming right then the baby did not come right then obviously but at the time we did not know so i got on the bed um and she was able to check and i was doing okay so i ended up feeling like i was going to get sick and i told them that so they went and got me a bucket um, and I did end up getting sick a few times and that helped a little bit, but obviously the pain was extreme. Now, my midwife later explained to me after my birth was over that when you have a labor that goes so fast from you going to having no contractions all day, like I had nothing to having such extreme contractions, it is really hard mentally to get your head around the fact and you like kind of cope with it because you're not expecting that everyone kind of expects your labor to slowly get stronger and i had none of that i just went into pretty much pushing labor which is obviously much more painful than beginning stages of labor so she said that it can be very hard especially for a first-time mom when they have that because they don't have time to prepare their bodies and like mentally prepare for the pain to get stronger and stronger so <laughs> that being said i was in a lot of pain i could not get comfortable nothing was pleasant <laughs> and so she said we had a birthing tub and she said well we can try and fill the birthing tub she's like Emily you seem to be going really fast I don't know if we're going to be able to get the tub filled and you in it and all that stuff before the baby's born but if you want we can try and I said I wanted to my husband put the hose in the birthing tub and got the water in there and ready and they got me in there and it was a wonderful thing I cannot recommend a birthing tub enough it was wonderful um, it just was like the only time, like I felt I could relax. And when you're in there, the contractions still hurt so bad that you sometimes don't think like it's really helping with the pain. But then if you stand up and get your belly out of the water, you're like, 
oh, it definitely is helping. Like get me back into the water where it helps. It'll be really good. I ended up being that a uh, bathtub for an hour and a half to two hours. I'm not hundred percent sure exactly what time I got in there. So I was in there for a couple hours and then my husband, uh, came up and he held me um from behind and helped me get into like a squatting position or a uh what are those yeah like doing a squat basically but he was supporting me and then i had a contraction and i pushed and he lowered me into the water as the baby was coming out and my midwife got the baby out and laid it on my chest and it was very it was just a very good experience it was a really wonderful birth um Obviously, there was a few dramatic parts before that that I will share in a minute, but as far as water birth, highly recommend. We'll be trying it this time again. Um, and just the overall experience was really good for home birth. So I can share many more reasons why I want to have a home birth, but obviously my experience was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. One thing I will say is when I was in the tub having contractions, I was very out of it. I was not conversational i was very vocal with my pains but not um enough to like make sense and one thing that i did not know going into labor is that when you have a contraction the baby's head comes down um and it feels like it's going to like start crowning and then it'll go up in between contractions until the baby actually does crown and so every time the baby would come down i'd feel like oh it's gonna come out it's gonna come out and then it would go back up and i was getting super frustrated because i wasn't vocalizing why i thought that and i just kept saying the baby's not gonna come out, it's stuck, it's not gonna work, something's wrong. And like all of a sudden they're like, you're doing fine. Just breathe, you're doing fine, you need to calm down, everything's okay. And I was like freaking out. And then later after the birth, they're like, that's, yeah, that's normal, Emily. Like, <laughs> you're supposed to feel that way. I'm like, well, nobody warned me about that. So when it was going back up, uh, I just was very concerned because it just felt like it's come down, up and down and up and it was very frustrating. So that was the kind of funny part looking back now about my labor. But overall, that's pretty much my labor story. Um, the afterbirth part was really nice as well. So I got to hold the baby for a few minutes and then she cut the cord and delivered the placenta or delivered the placenta and cut the cord. I honestly don't remember. I was kind of out of it at that point. Um, she did that. She got me out and laying on the bed for a little bit and I laid on the bed and she took Isaac to the end of the bed and she weighed him where I could see him. She just did all the things she needed to do, checked on him and made sure everything was fine. She swallowed him up. Ugh. She swaddled him up and brought him to me and I got to hold him for a little bit longer uh, while she finished up some things. And then she passed Isaac over to Sean and she took me into the bathroom. She helped me shower and get ready, um, get a pad on. She checked my bleeding, everything like that. And then she cleared off the bed and got me back into bed, gave me Isaac again, helped me start nursing Isaac and try and get him to latch. And then she told Sean, because it was obviously at like three o'clock in the morning at this time, she's like, let's just get into bed with her, try and relax. Um, I trying to get some sleep and she turned on a little nightlight and turned off all the other lights in the room and she went downstairs and she started a load of laundry with some of the towels and stuff we used. Um, she also makes a tea uh, for you to drink and then she also makes a tea to spray in your another region to help with infections every time you uh, go to the bathroom because obviously you can't wipe. So she made all of that stuff, set it out. She came back up. Um, and I think Sean was sleeping at this point. She came back up and she checked on us, asked if we, we were okay. And I said, yes, we're fine. And she said, are you comfortable if I leave? And she says, everything seems to be good. The baby's fine, you're fine. Um, you can call me if you need anything. And I said that I was perfectly fine. And so she left and we were able to go to sleep. And then she calls again the next morning. And then she came over at like nine o'clock in the morning to do a checkup on me. And then she would come every day for a few days and then uh, would slowly separate her visits until, I can't remember how many weeks she visits afterwards, um, but she would visit a little bit more sporadically towards the end, but for the first week she'd come um, quite often to check on you and the baby and make sure everything was fine. So a pretty simple process. Um, obviously some people have worse experiences. I didn't tear, so we didn't have to do anything with that. Um, so yeah, that is the basics of my 
favorite story I for say. us. Um, and for the use of the crock pot, in case you're wondering what that is, which I will explain again in my video when we get the supplies ready, um, she puts water in it and it heats it up and she puts rags in there and then she holds the rags on your skin down there while it stretches. Um, and the warmth <laughs> from that really helps with the stretching. Um, it helps with the pain uh, when she would take the rags away to get a warmer rag to replace it with. Um, you could definitely tell the difference. It really helps with pain. I know it sounds really silly, um, but when you're in labor, I would highly suggest having someone do that if they do not do that for you um, or ask them to give you a rack so you can do that. It sounds really weird, but it was such a huge help with the pain relief, especially when I was stretching out so fast um, because obviously I dilated fairly fast. So all of that to say, um, <laughs> that is my birth story and hopefully knowing how fast our labor went will kind of explain when we do make the labor supply video what we're doing and what we're not doing and what we're getting ready um, and we may seem a little bit over prepared um, by having every single thing in the room and in some ways we are obviously this labor could be as long as this one or longer but um, from start to finish from my plug coming out at 8 30 to delivering at 2 uh, it's not a huge time gap in there especially when my contraction started at like 10. So I just want to get everything ready and done and set up. So if I do have a faster labor or a labor the same speed, we're a little bit more prepared and I will give my husband's uh, instructions and <laughs> go through where everything is the month prior to my labor. So if he needs to get anything, uh, he'll know where it is and he won't be quite so cut off guard. Thank <laughs> you.